Hey, we are live. Welcome back to Hangouts with Cascadia. Today is the 22nd of December, and we are doing Hangout number eight. And today's subject, my favorite subject of all, because it just keeps coming up, why testing matters. Emily is joining me tonight, and we're going to talk about some case study stuff that might illustrate why testing your private label product is a very important thing to do prior to bringing it to market. So, Emily, last week we talked about sourcing um, with our lovely, lovely sourcing lady, Jean Ping, aka Bell, who did a wonderful job of kind of going into that aspect of things. And why sourcing from the right factory, being very clear and specific about what you want, all of that matters. Uh, like this type of stainless steel you might want. But what about the testing aspect? Um, let's say we find we're doing our stuff, we're putting together our product and we find a great source. The factory seems to have all the certificates, um, paperwork. Is that enough to move forward? Um, you know, <clears throat> this comes up in coaching, uh, coaching scenarios quite a bit when people, uh, come to me and want to create a new product or um, kind of tweak an existing one. Um, a lot of our clients who are new to product development just don't uh, tend to understand how much detail uh, really goes into the managing of the production of um, items, particularly in a Chinese factory. Um, so really there are a few things that you should be aware of. Um, I think the most important thing is that your your contact at the Chinese factory, they don't want to tell you no. They don't want to have to be the bearer of bad news. So they often will do whatever it takes to um, give you a yes, even when they can't necessarily do it. Right. Um, and so that's an important thing to realize that it's just built into the culture. It's built into the way they do business. They uh, don't want to say no that's a bad thing. So they will always try to do what they can, can that they say they can do, even if they can't necessarily do it. So um, you just need to know that kind of in the back of your mind and a lot of people don't. So I think that that's an important one. Um, secondly, kind of along that same line is, you know, at Amazon, we used to say um, trust, but verify. And I think that that's a similar sort of concept here. You know, trust what they're saying. They're not really um, often going to intentionally lie to you. That's not their goal. You're their client. They really want to make you happy. Um, in fact, they'll go the other way, which is what I was saying before. They'll tell you things they actually can't do. Um, and run the risk of disappointing you that way. So trust what they're saying, but verify, you know, um, if if they say that they, they will switch out a, a certain component of the product for another one, then, then just make sure that that gets done, um, particularly if you're talking about price differences and things like that, because they might switch it out and not tell you um, just to make it a little bit cheaper. It's just good to know. Um, Another important thing I think when dealing with Chinese factories is to be perfectly clear on what your intentions are. Um, and so what I mean by that is that if you really, really need this thing on the shelves by uh, you know March 25th, then they're gonna do everything in their power to make that happen, including um, cutting corners. Um, they will, they will do what it takes to make that deadline if they know that that's your highest priority. So if your highest priority is a very, very quality product, then that needs to be made very clear to them. Um, you don't care if it's on the shelves by March 25th, but it needs to pass muster. It needs to be good. It needs to be um, above par in every way. Or I need this product on the shelves by March 25th, and then you're just going to get what you get. Right. Um, so... Um, when when I was thinking about what we were going to talk about tonight, I was thinking about um, some examples of how um, this can go down in real life. And so we just had this happen, but I switched the product. So it's something else. We're using the trusty garlic press that we always <laughs> Our favorite that. example ever, but it's so relatable, don't you think? Exactly. So, uh, so here with our imaginary garlic press, um, imagine a garlic press is just a plain old garlic press. You, you put the clothes in, you squish it down and, and fresh garlic comes out. Um, it's got little metal pins that hold the hinge together and it's just a little garlic press. 
So you get the sample from the factory. It looks okay. It looks fine. Uh, seems to work. It's got the little thing in there. And then you don't test it. You don't do anything with it. You just uh, approve the shipment and just send it off to Amazon. Um, and it sits on the, on the shelves for a while and, and you start getting some sales. And over the course of a couple of months, you realize that um, your product is at like two and a half stars and it's not really getting all that great of reviews. And you're starting to see that uh, reviews are starting to complain of breakage at the hinge, um, garlic squishing out the sides, spraying people in the face with garlic. And it's, it's, it's <laughs> <laughs> terrible middle image, but I can see it happening. <laughs> <laughs> so, so there. Th so you you take it off the shelves. You you try and figure out what's going on. You go back to the factory. You let them know. Um, they tell you that they retool the product, and then you know maybe they provide some new photos. Maybe it looks slightly different. It's a different angle or something. Right. And then you say okay, and you just approve the shipment, and and it comes back in. But you haven't done any testing to ensure that it actually is different or that it's changed in any way. And um, this actually happened with with a different product, and so um, you know. In 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 the meantime, um, you Amazon has taken down your listing because you've got all these problems with your garlic press, and you you're fixing it on the back end. But you go ahead and you just start up something else and um, make a new listing and just start selling off of that. Um, and at that point, you that, that's not a good thing. <laughs> so you, you start selling from this other thing, and then and now all of a sudden they actually take down your entire account because now you're selling something that's actually under investigation, and they can tell that you that you know this and that you did this. And right. um, so not only have you um, sort of gone above and beyond. <laughs> unacceptable where the TOS is concerned, the terms of service, but now you've also got a product that's coming back through that the uh, supplier didn't even retool. They didn't actually do anything with it. So the complaints were coming through on the other listing right. as well. So you're kind of getting hit from both sides. Yeah. And all because, you know, and I, I think that it's important to mention it's not because this client um, d didn't know or they just they didn't think to test. They they didn't think that that was a thing that they should do. And so I guess that's the kind of the main point, the thing that's come up, the thing that's been the buzz um, this week is just this idea that um, that testing is not um, universally understood as important for products. And a lot of the time it is. And particularly if something happens um, safety wise with a product, your first go-to is gonna have to be to test that product and not fake it because you'll get caught. <laughs> also our example. Uh, it's, yeah, I don't even know where to start with that because there's such a, such a human impulse, I think, to want to try to get through without necessarily checking all those boxes off. And it just, yeah. it's well, just it's not the right thing to do. You know, I mean, it's just, what do I do? What do I need to do to fix this? What do I have to do? You know, and there, anyone would take the, the path of least resistance. And I think that that's an interesting thing to think about, too, in terms of a factory, um, because all they do is make the thing that you ask them to do. They make widgets. You want the garlic press, they make the garlic press. You want the garlic press by March 25th, they will make it by March 25th. You want it with the special screws, then that's gonna take longer, but we'll do that. You know, like whatever you specify, that's what they will do. Um, and I think that uh, something that I've been seeing over the last year and a half is that things aren't always as specific as they could be. So when they go to the, uh, the factory, there's either a lot of back and forth or there's not a lot of back and forth and then they're unhappy with the product. And it, mm -hmm. right. Sure. Sure. So mm -hmm. <clears throat> let's talk a little bit about what Cascadia can do to help with this. Um, because I think that we've laid out probably a pretty familiar scenario at this point and people can go, oh, okay, I got it. So it kind of broke down like this. Emily's story, for those of you who are trying to follow along, it's like the garlic press was never tested and, you know, this client relied on the supplier. And now all of a sudden, bam, problems. So 
what we do is we develop custom test plans to help with that enforcement in mind, that potential enforcement during the development process. So you bypass ever having this problem to begin with, which is really the goal. Um, we only work with accredited laboratory personnel and you pay in US dollars, so there's no foreign transaction fees, hidden costs, all that fun stuff. And this is where you do not want to go cheap. You want inspectors to make their money, but you want to make it honestly. So a poorly paid instructor, or excuse me, uh, inspector is more likely to extort the factory, take a bribe, spend the money, do it right, you're going to eliminate some of that corruption that can cause problems and cause you to get the exact same garlic press that you failed to test right the first time. So let's not do that either. Um, some sellers immediately, well, let me say this. I wish more sellers would react more proactively when they start getting negative reviews. Right. Um, but some sellers overreact and they immediately take down a listing when, when negative reviews come in. Um, while Amazon expects immediate and aggressive action when there are problems, um, Amazon Basics, for instance, had a rule that no product could go below three and a half stars without being potentially phased out. So don't don't go crazy and take it down immediately, but do investigate. I think there's a fine line there. You need to be aware without being overcautious. Um, what about situations where sellers don't get an approval to relist, like what you were talking about? Um, this is where it gets really unfortunate because no one should have their account suspended for something that's so relatively trivial. But if you're breaking the rules, Amazon has all the rights in the world to decide how they're going to punish you for it. And in this spe specific example where we're talking about an unsafe garlic press brought to market twice because of improper or absent testing, I think Amazon is within their rights to go, whoa, 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 seller, hold up, you've been suspended. So, yeah. you know, in that case. Now, does that apply to everything? No, not necessarily. Um, but I do think that if you if you do that, if you if you fail to do your due diligence the first time around and try to get around the system a second time, you're going to find yourself in, in a world of hurt. Amazon is very sensitive to sellers who relist product that they have told you not to relist, regardless of what the original reason is. Um, yeah. The other thing that we see sometimes is um, people that we work with, clients we work with, will rely on people who are unqualified. Um, in this specific garlic press example that we've been talking about, one our client had brought on someone to help him in China, which is a totally legit strategy. A lot of people do it. Unfortunately, the person that he hired was not QA, QC, experienced merchandiser. He had done sourcing and selling, but he had the same blind spots as our client. Um, yeah. which is not good. <laughs> you you want to hire somebody who can fill in and complement, kind of like the way we all do at Cascadia. All of us have strengths and they yeah. complement one another where, you know, where Emily is strong and I'm weak, we we balance out and vice versa with, you know, Christina and I. So the three of us do that really well, as well as all of our associates. Um, but you got to hire the right person for the job. So <clears throat> one of the things that we do to help sellers is we have monthly plans to allow you to hire people part-time in China if you're still small or if you want us to manage a full-time person we'll go out hire and train a merchandiser to do however many hours a week you need uh, it's key to find someone that's qualified though really really key I, we had a saying that we put up a couple weeks ago what it, what was it that said Emily it's like the cost of you know if you oh, think it's expensive to hire a, a, a expensive professional hire, wait till you hire an amateur I think exactly I mean you would not hire a lawyer to do your taxes or a copywriter to handle your financial reporting don't hire a sourcing agent to do quality assurance mm -hmm. so um, you know that's a lot of information tell me tell me what your what your thoughts are on that as far as being a coach because that's a lot of what you do for Cascadia um, yeah no I think for me a lot of it is uh, just kind of helping people navigate all of these little um, intricacies of things and um, Particularly for me, having worked in um, Amazon's product safety division, the testing and, uh, you know, things like that, uh, quality complaints, safety complaints, what was mm -hmm. the nature of it, what happened, what exploded, who got burned, like those things are uh, of interest to me. And so, um, you know, when I'm, when I've got a coaching client, um, particularly if they're brand new, particularly mm -hmm. if they don't really know uh, what it is that they're doing then these kinds of things I think that are well I don't think I know our overarching intention at Cascadia is to uh, protect you and take care mm -hmm. of you and and 
see things that you don't see because you can't know what you don't know. And right. So, right. I mean, uh, and isn't that half the battle? I think is that sellers. I exactly. think sometimes go into this thinking that they have to know everything. And exactly. You don't really have to know everything. I think it's just key to um, you know back to the example of um, you know our example seller. You can't just go start a new listing. You can't just Why? pretend. <laughs> didn't happen and just go start it over here and and act like they won't know. You know, like you do need to face things head on. <laughs> if there are complaints, if there are problems, um, you have to hear those. You have right. to listen, to them, do something about them because that translates to liability. And I don't think a lot of people get that. Exactly, and that actually brings up a good question, which somebody just asked. And unfortunately, y'all, I can't see the the text box that normally gives me your questions. So if you're asking things and I can't see them, I am not ignoring you. I promise. But I actually some, can't see any questions at all. So I know I can't either. But we did get one that I got via email, and the question is this: If Amazon isn't requiring that we test, is it really necessary? Yes, yes, it yeah. is. For the exact reason that we just we just elucidated, because you can be trying to do all the right things and bring a really good product to market, but there's problems. Like we talked about, you know, the pins in your garlic press are a bad metal and it's, you know, it's causing a contamination into the food or it's breaking and you go back and try to fix it. If you don't know what you're doing and you don't have someone on your side to help you deal with those testing protocols, you are likely to get that same product back. So um, testing is important. Let's put this another way. You go out for Christmas shopping tomorrow and you buy a toy for your child and you presume it's safe, but it's not because somebody didn't do their testing and it's got cadmium in it. And cadmium is extremely toxic to small children. And there are numerous, numerous problems with that. If you don't believe me, look it up. Um, you would be outraged if that happened to you. Testing is important. On that same note, we've got another question. Um, if you were to get into something low risk, what would it be? I was thinking maybe supplements or tids ken kids tennis rackets. No, <laughs> <laughs> neither of those are low risk. And Emily, you've worked a lot with kids products. Let's talk, tell me a second, give me your opinion yeah. on why kids tennis rackets are not a well, uh, low risk category. Well, a tennis racket can be dangerous. And second of all, if it's marketed toward a child, it really, really needs to not be dangerous. Well, so. and aren't there really specific regulations too? Uh, would, wouldn't you say yeah. that kids stuff really has a lot more of, of regulatory burden? Yeah, they do. Um, a really obvious example of that, um, which I think is great to illustrate the point, is um, hooded sweatshirt. You, you're an adult. You've got a hooded sweatshirt with a drawstring. It's. Um, Let's see, where's mine? Oh no, I've got one. Oh, here it is. There you, go. you have one right now. See, so drawstrings in hooded sweatshirts have no regulation. There's no problem with them at all. But if it's a child's hoodie with a drawstring, then there are regulations that go into um, the manufacturer of that. Oh, and, I did not know that. I knew about like the stuff with the yeah. like the blinds. Like I'm looking at my blinds, and they have the. The core, yeah. the strangulation <laughs> issue, right? Yeah. So there's another. Um, you know, honestly, that goes that goes back into that's back in the files, back here somewhere. <laughs> but um, there were there have been blinds that have been recalled actually because mm -hmm. uh, children um, hung themselves on yep. the core. Um, I think that just involved um, placing a prominent warning on the packaging, if right. I'm mistaken. But anytime a child is involved assume that uh, the regulatory compliance factor is going to be much, much stronger and mm. um, you really have to pay attention to every little thing that goes right. into that product. And the a same children's product. Oh, sorry, go ahead. No, that's all I was gonna say. Oh, okay, well the same is true with supplements. Anything that you're putting in your body is going to have a pretty high regulatory bar. Um, yeah. Do not. Yeah ever think that something like that is going to be easy. If you're putting it on your body and you're putting it in your body, those are high regulatory bars. The FDA has a lot of rules. So another question that we've gotten, um, someone says, hey, you guys mentioned hiring someone in China and I looked at your website, what's a merchandiser? Great question. Um, that probably means a different thing to different people. Uh, so 
merchandisers coordinate all the China stuff, the, the sampling, the production, the arranging, the testing, inspection, visiting the factory. Kind of think of them as like your on-site project manager, but in China for all of your, your sourcing stuff and, and developing of your product. They're just on the ground, they're boots on the ground to do what you need to do. So that's a really good question. Um, we probably talk about a lot of things that make people go, what does that mean? And feel free to ask those questions and we'll be happy to define them. Um, one other thing I want to talk about real quickly, um, kind of dovetailing and back backpedaling a little bit on the supplements thing. Um, if you are looking to get into private label and you want to develop your own product, as we just discussed, don't do kids or supplements because those are really high burg regulatory burdens in the testing requirements as well as just the general liability issues can be very expensive. And we've talked a little bit about insurance and things like that in the past, but um, consult with other people who know about developing products because what may be low risk to you, it might be high risk depending on the more you know about that particular category. Um, when you're reselling, one of the things I tell people is that electronics can be very high risk to you because they are perceived as a high fraud item. So if you come into the marketplace brand new, fresh as a seller, and all you're listing are the hottest new iPhones, which you got legitimately right, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you did. Okay. Yeah. You are still a risk. Yeah, see, thank you, Emily. I knew you, tell <laughs> I knew you did. No, um, you're a risk. Okay. So Amazon looks at that a little bit differently than than if you have been selling for a long time and you're selling new and hot product. Um, those same kinds of things will apply to different categories. A lot of people, um, they think very passionately about a product and then they go with it, but there can be risks. So you just have to know your risk and know your risk tolerance. Yeah. Um, oh, another good question. Wow, we're getting all the good ones tonight. So <laughs> this this lovely uh, viewer found a supplier in the U.S., but the packaging cost is insane. Uh, can Cascadia help with sourcing packaging in China? And what are there are there regulations on packaging too? Yes, we can. We can do almost anything. Trust me. <laughs> and there are regulations. Um, there's things with toxic. Uh, compounds and packaging, and it bans the presence of lead, cadmium, which we talked about a minute ago, and hexavalent chromium and packaging. I have a hard time saying that word every single time I get it. Hexavalent, ah, chromium, <laughs> just chromium. Hex chromium, yeah. anything that ends in mium, germa germanium, chromium, no, seriously, there are regulations, and yes, we can help you with that without getting too deep into the weeds, because there's a lot of little, a little things to know there, but we do have the expertise to help you with that. Um, anything else that you've seen this week, Emily, that you think might be worth talking about that kind of is in the testing range? I know we've, we've talked a lot about the safety incident stuff. Um, what else are you seeing that we might want to... No. I, I haven't thought of anything else that's funny this week, but oh come on! Um, but I was I was kind of laughing when you were talking about how there's so many regulations for different things and how the FDA has governance over and how we love to use the garlic press for all of our examples. And part of the reason why is because a lot of people actually manufacture a garlic press. It's yep. kind of an easy thing to break into for a lot of people, so they go for it. But even the garlic press because it touches food that goes into your body has regulations that need to be met. And people don't realize, you know, that a lot of, um, a lot of testing goes into a lot of seemingly innocuous things. Right. Well, and I think it's really easy too, though, to, you know, I, I'm looking at all the stuff on my desk. I've got in no particular order, a Christmas ornament, a wireless travel mouse, um, a little phone book, a cell phone case. I, all of these things have to be tested for various reasons because a lot of these things are touching you. Yeah, I guaranteed someone lost their job over the design of one of those things. Yes, I know, isn't that frightening to even <laughs> contemplate? But it's true, it's true. I mean, um, think, about, think about the recent recalls that you have seen in the news. Yeah. Do those not frighten you? Because they should. If you are intent on getting into private label, which I think is a brilliant thing to do, and I think can really be fulfilling, it can be a career path, it can release all that entrepreneurial amazingness that you have inside of you, 
do so with eyes open and know that there are things that you have to be able to do well. And if you are not naturally inclined to risk management, then you need to hire someone who is. It, just like I am not at all naturally inclined to creative copywriting and content. Emily is. That's why Emily works with me, because she's awesome at that stuff. Um, and that's why, you know, Christina is our salesperson, because she's amazing at that. And that's why we've got people who do all kinds of things in Cascadia that they're really super good at. And that doesn't necessarily mean that I am. And so hire those things out, delegate them out. Testing, the, the primary subject of tonight, is no different. You, you want to work with the accredited labs, the ones that know what they're doing, that are not going to just churn out results because they want to rubber stamp stuff. So that's kind of the name of the game, I think, in private labels. Yeah, you get caught up in figuring out what your garlic press is going to look like. Is it going to have rubber handles? Is it going to have, you know, diamond studs on it to be really fancy? So the Kardashian <laughs> one, you know? <laughs> <laughs> terrible can, can you all tell it's getting close to the holidays because we are losing our minds no i mean think about it though you get really caught up in the the idea you want to you want to develop you want to get all the artwork and choose the fonts and the packaging and all that stuff's really exciting but there are risks and you need to know what those are so if you don't know that is what Cascadia does. We help you identify the risks. We help you mitigate and avoid those risks. And if you are unfortunate enough to shoot yourself in the foot with a risk, we will help you with that. We'll help you figure out the best way to backtrack and, and correct. That's that's what we do. And there's no shame in that. I know some pi sometimes people are probably like, oh, I made a mistake and now I can't fix it. Yes, you can. But you might need help to do that. Yeah. And that's where we come in, right? I mean, how, how often would you say, Emily, that you talk to a client, and I know this is all the time for me, where they've done something wrong, maybe not intentionally, oh, probably most of the time not intentionally, but they've made a mistake and then they, they lose their minds because they think the world is over. Yeah, that's actually exactly where my mind was just going. And um, I think that I was coming to um, the statement that it's actually not personal. It's not, and that's one of the beauty things of Amazon is they're data driven. They, yep. there's, there's not a lot of people in terms of what, who's actually looking at all of this data. It is not. <laughs> Sorry, I just realized we have a visitor. If you can see him, that's my little man Loki, and he agrees with everything you just said. Oh, good, 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 good. <laughs> That's why I get for not shutting my door and, and you know saying the web the webcast is on stay out no you're right I, I think the data driven and it's not personal thing is really yeah, easy to forget personal. so you know it's it, yeah you shouldn't have gotten your listing suspended um, so yes you did mess up but there's not somebody in an office somewhere in Seattle going tisk tisk Mrs Smith you know like that's not how it works what you right. have to do then is take responsibility for what happened mm -hmm. and demonstrate that you know how you're going to fix it. Right. And um, the where we come in in that is that we know what Amazon expects you to say about how you're going to fix it. So right, you right. And you know that actually brings up something else. If you're a, if you've been watching our webinars and you've been thinking about hiring us for some, some consulting around reinstatement efforts, other whether for accounts or ASINs, there's something I really I want to emphasize that Emily just said. We know what Amazon expects for from you as a seller to be a viable plan of action, or POA as they call it, because everything's an acronym when you're dealing with Amazon. <laughs> um, accountability is key. And that's kind of what we've been talking about all night. What is product testing? It's accountability. It's you taking responsibility for your product and saying, I have done everything I can humanly do to make sure that this product will be safe. And when you are writing a plan of action for suspended ASIN or for your entire account, you have to take accountability for any actions that you have taken that could have caused problems, whether they were intentional or not. And you have to be able to do a root cause analysis. In other words, go back and find what caused the issues. Sometimes it's more than one thing. Explain those in a clear way and then explain how you will prevent them. It's not just about fixing them because once Amazon's brought it to your attention, it's not enough to just say, okay, I fixed it. That, you know, it's, it's not, it's done. It's not, it's, no, it's not done. You have to prevent you. Prevention is that, that key aspect that I think a lot of people um, don't know how to explain, but it really all comes back to that 
root cause analysis. If you are able to figure out what caused the problem, reverse engineer how you got from B, you know, A to B, how do you get from B back to A, you'll get to the answers and then you can provide that. But it's really important that you think like that. Um, Amazon uses SMART goals. And if you're not familiar with SMART goals, it's also an acronym. Look it up. <laughs> Um, and that's actually sometimes how I uh, a coach clients is to say, if you were telling me how you were going to create your business plan and you didn't tell me dates, times, amounts, product titles, you know, how you expected to measure it as a success, would it be when it makes a million dollars or when it makes two million? Why would I take your business plan seriously? Because you're not giving me specifics. You're not giving me anything that shows that you have done the homework. And that's what Amazon is, is doing, is they're asking you to do your homework. That accountability, correction, and proactiveness are key. And really, you are if you are building a business, if you're doing private label, you are building on all of those things. Build your business the right way. Do the accountability. Do the testing. Do the testing. That is the theme today. If you are not, and you are considering doing private label, I would discourage you from proceeding because you don't want to hurt somebody. Just like yeah. I was saying, if you went Christmas shopping tomorrow and picked up a toy for your, your son, your daughter, your niece, your nephew, your grandchild, you are expecting it to be safe. We are very lucky in this country that we have some of the regulation that we have, although we could do better in some areas, but those laws protect you and your, your family. You don't want to pick something up that could make your child or your relative or your friend's child sick. You want things to be safe. Yeah. And you should want that too if you're creating a product. So, Roger that. I know. Preach into the choir though, aren't I? <laughs> Emily and I are on the same page. It's, it's important to say, you know, it's probably going to need to be said many, many more times. Many, many more times. And that is why we are here is to reinforce that message. If you have been watching the previous Hangouts, which I encourage you to do, please go check our channel and look at the past Hangouts. Um, this is a theme that comes up a lot. We talk a lot about doing things the right way and having that accountability. And no one is expecting perfection. No one's expecting that you never make a mistake. Uh, but if you really and seriously are going to invest your time and money and energy into doing private label, I strongly recommend that you Talk to, talk to people who are mentors, um, other sellers in the community. Talk to people like us and, and get our opinions so that you can move forward the right way. Because I don't think you want to spend, again, all that time and energy and money only to see your, your legacy, so to speak, be a broken product that harms someone. So, you know, let's not go that way. And now on that totally downer note, <laughs> I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Woo, yes, we're just making everybody's lives so much easier. No, we are not here to be the no fun pants client consulting, I swear. Um, a lot of what we do actually creates really cool stuff and people make really amazing things and they do a lot with their businesses and they make their dreams come true. I see people do it all the time. But you've got to do it in a way that um, is right and safe for you and for the people who are buying your stuff. So. We will yeah. rejoin you in this lovely hangout space on the 29th. I don't know what we'll be talking about then, but stay tuned and you will find out. Hopefully we'll get somebody else from Cascadia that maybe we've not talked to to uh, join us or maybe get a returning guest like Jennifer, our logistics person, or Belle or Suzanne. Or we have also, huh? Maybe Loki. Ah, yes. <laughs> Wouldn't that be amazing? <laughs> yes, Loki. Loki can talk about bone safety because that's all he does is chew on things right now. I think I must I must have four thousand rawhides in my house that he has decided are safe. Aren't they? They're safe. Yep. He's like, Yep, they're totally safe. Um, yeah, he'll be the star next week, or maybe I can get his sister to join. He's like, Nope, now I'm shy. We're not doing Let's that. Let's have all our pets on next week. I think That'll we should do that. I think we should do that. And again, for those of you who submitted questions that I could not see, I am so sorry. Um, if you would like to have them featured next week, please send them to info at Cascadia and let them let the uh, people who answer the email know that you couldn't get your question answered during the uh, webinar tonight. And we will see if we can't get those tackled next week so that everybody's you know stuff gets handled because we always want to be able to answer those questions. So again, thank you for joining us tonight. And we will see you again on the 29th of December, post-Christmas. And whether you celebrate or not, have a wonderful holiday. All right, Emily, have a good night. And we will talk to you soon as well. Good night, everyone. Bye. Bye.